America is in terminal decline. In fact, it has been in this slow process since the advent of the Federal Reserve Counterfeit Fiat Currency Act of 1913. Also occurring at about this same time was the advent of the mass media of radio and films which was cunningly monopolized by the enemies of all decent humanity. These two tools, in the hands of international usurers and soulless supremacists respectively, have been the cancerous tumor which has metastasized to our present insane clown world. Yes indeed, Mr. Xi, America is in terminal decline. Make your move against this insane asylum. America has no moral or economic standing to continue being the world bully. Why else would so many countries be standing up to it now? Our corporations control government, we censor presidents the media doesn't like. The woke madness is making us a laughing stock. Our warmongering has been bankrupting us, hard to imagine a collapse isn't coming. Sometimes we need to be on the outside looking in to see the obvious. The USA is in terminal decline as a direct result of endemic corruption at all levels of government, a cancer eating the USA alive. That should be pretty bloody obvious to everyone by now. As a result of never-ending US push-pull diplomacy, the government of China is now responding in kind, push-pull diplomacy right back. So a lot gets said with not much value to keep each other guessing. Meanwhile China cleans up its corruption and is thriving, and the USA does not clean up its corruption and is being eaten alive by it. Neither China nor Russia are doing anything to defeat the USA. They watch on bemused as the USA destroys itself with corruption and attacks anyone who dares to challenge that corruption. We can't push back against other countries like China when we are turning our own country into a police state and dividing the country on racial and political lines. I blame the Democrats and the Republicans for this. They have sold off the country by incentivizing corporations to offshore all of the good jobs and products. They have perpetually overspent and increased the size of government. They have allowed the Fed to decimate the value of our currency. They have ignored the Constitution and have merged with the media and big tech to censor and control the narrative. In short, our corrupt and sociopathic leaders have done this, with intent. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Asian players are proving to be conceptually and bureaucratically better positioned in the 21st century's great game that involves tectonic geopolitical shifts with the emergence of what commonly called the Eurasian continent which is the fusion of Europe and Asia into a supercontinent. While China and Russia solidify their economic and political alliance, the US is missing an historic chance to join a multilateral world, instead clinging to military empire. Since Saudi Arabia, which mostly consists of flat desert with oil wells, spends more on defense than the entire 11 time zones of the nuclear power Russian Federation, it seems they are not spending particularly wisely. Putin dropped the hint about the Saudis acquiring the S-400 when asked point-blank about the early Saturday major drone attack on the Aramco facilities, citing the need for Riyadh to protect its oil infrastructure. Joking that Saudi Arabia should buy the same S-400 anti-missile defense system that Moscow already sold to Tehran, amid the laughter of Iranian officials, including President Rouhani. Interestingly, he along with the other two leaders meeting in Ankara this week, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, were all in agreement that the US-Saudi coalition bombing campaign and war on Yemen must be brought to a close as soon as possible. Absolute folly that the US forced both Iran and Russia into China's arms instead of making deals with them and doing business. That's literally tens of trillions of dollars of business lost. Every action of the US is helping create a multipolar world, a stepping stone toward world government. Those who ultimately decide US policy are globalists, not nationalists. The rise of Eurasia will trigger the permanent decline of the United States and with it the nations considered as the West that will slide into a deep economic downturn. Social upheaval and disarray will follow once it becomes clear that the economic model is no longer functioning. Those that claim we are in the makings of such a system refuse to acknowledge that the West is in steep decline and that there are deep ideological differences between the leadership in China, Russia and that of the West. Iran's Foreign Minister Mohammad Zarif paid a visit to his Chinese counterpart Wang Li to present a roadmap for the China-Iran Comprehensive Strategic Partnership, signed in 2016. 
The updated agreement echoes many of the points contained in previous China-Iran accords, and already in the public domain. However, many of the key specifics of this new understanding will not be released to the public, despite representing a potentially material shift to the global balance of the oil and gas sector, according to a senior source closely connected to Iran's petroleum ministry who spoke exclusively to petroleum economist. Without any benefit of doubt Iran become a valuable partner of Belt and Road Initiative led by China. Iran in return get security against imperialist ambition. The great irony is of course that current American policies aimed at frustrating any Eurasian economic sphere are in fact the engine that drives this process. Russia dreamed of joining the EU and NATO as a means to build a peaceful Eurasia. That was prevented by the US and as a consequence, Russia created the Eurasia Economic Union EAEU as an equivalent and intended copy of the EU, since changed a bit to avoid the EU's pitfalls. In practice, Russia and China will be advancing the alignment of China's new Silk Roads, or Belt and Road Initiative, with Russia's Eurasia Economic Union. Russia was pushed to China by US sanctions, initially for loans to avoid IMF austerity and securing these loans with large oil and gas contracts. This move created the space for the real takeoff of Belt and Road Initiative by making possible land routes from China to Europe via Russia. Since then, both Russia and China corralled as many countries as they can to their respective groups, EEAU and SCO. Russia joined the Belt and Road Initiative and it became clear that the future would be a free trade agreement between the two groups, carefully hidden initially to prevent premature US interference while the blocs were still vulnerable. Russia and China would never have been getting along so well again so quickly if it wasn't for American economic and political meddling. China stipulated in all clarity its principle of global markets but between nation-states, not a borderless area. China is more aware of the insurmountable administrative problems of borderless societies and is a firm believer in nation. Its system is modeled on society. The group is more important than individual, but individual is paramount to innovation and progress and peace. In the larger system of Belt and Road Initiative, nations are the larger entity of individual and the group is the Belt and Road Initiative itself. This will limit administration to each nation, leave the right to self-determination intact and further national, cultural diversity that is good for trade. China experienced uniformity in its recent past and found it not conducive to lively interchange. That is the insight underlying its principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of other states. China was world economic engine way before the US was born. India and China were more than 50% of the world economy since birth of Christ till 1750. They are simply taking back their place. The rise of Asian giants like India and China will eclipse the West, as social programs of free money where social security and Medicare are becoming unsustainable. The West can't compete with the BRICS power. The reality is that dollar is the only US export, and it is about to be dropped as the reserve currency, which will turn the US into a third world country. The last option is to go to war or suck it up. The world is no longer unipolar and the American empire is collapsing from within. No external forces needed. More or less the leftist socialist will destroy the West as they want everything for free. With the EU running into more and more resistance to its normalizing pressures and increasing subjugation by the US, there will in time come a move east, away from US dominance and towards new markets free of neocon limitations. That is why the EU nations joined the Chinese Development Bank and silently expand trade with Russia. The future is a free trade agreement between the EU, the EAEU and SCO, while NATO will disappear and get reformulated as a pan-Eurasian defense force. The United States of Europe will not happen, it is not in the interest of trade. While Washington remains a bipartisan prisoner to the Russophobic Platonic Cave, where Cold War shadows on the wall are taken as reality. We are missing the train to Eurasia. We would thrive if hitched to a ride on the Eurasia integration train, more jobs and more business opportunities instead of more foreign wars. Yet it won't happen. Russia and China are developing the ultimate nightmare for those former shamans of US foreign policy, Henry Kissinger and the late Zbigniew Grand Chessboard Brzezinski. A new world is being shaped rapidly. And the reality of facts will continue to demand from world leaders a new approach and a new direction. Eurasia today is not a dream it is a necessity. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. 
subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.